I'm Woodsy Owl, and I'm here to tell you about a dirty word, pollution. Help Woodsy spread the word. Never be a dirty bird. Hoo-hoo. Don't pay to write off buildings. That's pollution. Give a hoo. Don't pollute. Never, Never be a dirty bird. Hoo-hoo. Turn your radio down. That's noise pollution. In the city or in the woods, how to keep America looking good. Hey, Joe. Hey, Jock. Did you hear about the one where uh, Jesus walks into a Motel 6, puts three nails on the desks, and says, Can you put me up for the night? hey oh. <laughs> Welcome to Carnival <laughs> Personnel. Jesus, cross your legs. We only have three nails. I say, Welcome to Carnival Personnel. <laughs> I'm Jock. I'm Joe. And as part of the diversity program, the Carnival Personnel has started, because Joe and I realized... You know, we need to be more inclusive. We need to broaden the horizon. And we thought that our show was missing a glasses-wearing, middle-aged, few-extra-pound white guy. So with that said... (laughs) With dark hair. With dark hair. With that said, welcome... Mike or Haji? What are we going with? Uh, Since I haven't gone by Haji in 15 years, let's... Call me Hachi. Okay, well, okay. <laughs> so 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 we have we have our friend Mike, and it's he, Joe and I knew we were doing a lousy job with the podcast, <laughs> so we figured let's bring a professional in to point out really how bad we are. And welcome this. your new co-host, Mike. <laughs> and when he wasn't available, you texted me, right? So so so. Uh, you know, you you know, I'm not as good as let's say Gilbert Gottfried with anything. Um, you know, giving giving your background and and bio. So why don't you give us your quick rundown? I've known Mike honestly since I was five, and I yeah. think you were three. Yep. We we grew up next door to each other. Uh, he's gone on to a 20 plus year radio career with like really big stations doing really big things. Yes. So I uh, did radio in Boston at uh, for stations that people may remember. I've killed them all. Uh, WBCN, <laughs> WZOU. Uh, that was, uh, let's see, where else? Oldies 103. All these stations non-existent anymore. Um, and then I traveled around the country doing radio in places like West Palm Beach, Florida, Dallas, uh, Detroit. I went to Phoenix, back to Detroit, back to Boston. Just big, Sounds like a typical radio call. Yes, <laughs> very, very nomadic lifestyle. Uh, no, no, you give, you're telling the stations and cities. Why don't you brag a little bit about the genres of music that you had to spin for? <laughs> okay, so... I'm a whore. I will play whatever music you want me to for money. Uh, so the first one was like Top 40. Then I did a hip-hop station. Uh, I did alternative rock. I did uh, soft rock. I did an all-80s format. And uh, I called my penance for kicking a puppy in a past life. I did country. Yeah. Uh, was country in Florida? Country was in country Florida. Country was in Florida. <laughs> okay. You know, and the funny thing is, I actually you know, got to see... like you, 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 Was XPL your, your birth of your music yes, DJ career? So uh, the two people that are responsible for my radio career, one is you. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. Uh, where uh, they were doing the open auditions, if I remember right, when we were at Fitchburg State uh, to go over to do that. And then uh, Dan McDermott, uh, who also went to Fitchburg State, we wound up uh, doing a heavy metal show at WXPL out there for the minute and a half that I stayed in, <laughs> <laughs> stayed in college. <laughs> and, uh, and, and it was great. It was like... 99, we're trying to figure this out earlier today, 99 to 2000, I was playing in a hockey tournament in Detroit, and I saw Mike, who was at the time, uh, Planet, was it Planet, that was the radio station? Planet 96.3. And it was the number one drive station. It was great, because, you know, Mike's brother lives for hockey, has played hockey his entire life. Um, Mike had never been on the ice at this point. <laughs> been on thin ice. Whoa! Thank you. Comedy. That's and, too much comedy for this podcast. Can you tone it down a bit? Just a bit. But he ends up becoming friends with, at the then time, juggernaut Detroit Red Wings. And Mike has all these great pictures of him holding the cup at, at different parties at Detroit I've People's seen Houses. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, it was great. You know, he, he was doing some, like, live remote at this big club. And it was, like, truly, you know, it was absolutely amazing what a little celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> I've done stupid things because of the, uh, the radio career. Did I ever, I don't know if we want to save this stuff for later, did I ever tell you about the time I played in a band for one song with Chad Smith from the Chili Peppers? No. Do you want that story? I want like, that. No, let's All have right, it. So, uh, out in Detroit, uh, I think they still do it, the Detroit Grand Prix. 
you know, IndyCar racing uh, thing that they had going on. And we had these, like, pit passes right around the track type of grand prize we were going to be giving away. And so what we decided to do was we did the what we called the uh, Johnny in the Morning, that was the name of the show, the Johnny in the Morning Drag Races, where we wound up getting to this outdoor bar, had a nice outdoor patio, and we would have men and women's clothing race on big wheels in heats to get, you know, the prize. So during this event, a friend of mine that uh, was one of the bookers for the Palace of Auburn Hills shows up with Chad Smith. And then whenever we would do one of these type of live broadcasts, we would uh, have a live band play. And I would always sit in with him, play the one and a half chords that I know. And next thing you know, Chad Smith is sitting in a, behind me on drums or playing Rockin' in the Free World while people are racing around on uh, big wheels in I, miniskirts. I also like to um, note that uh, your radio station was probably the first trans-inclusive yes. uh, radio station. With the... <laughs> Actually, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, shoot, no. I'm trying to remember which one. That might be Kiss 108 from like back in the late 70s, early 80s. Oh, yeah? I think they had a character on one of the shows there oh, okay. that was trans. Uh, so so Mike's radio name was Haji for yes. absolute years and years based on Johnny Quest's sidekick because he was partnered with Johnny. I don't even yeah. know Johnny's last name. Edwards. Johnny Edwards, who, who was a, you know, he he was like kind of the face to the show and Mike was the producer and, and the sidekick. And so he was Haji to Johnny. Then that... Uh, that little thing called 9-11 happened, <laughs> and the name Haji no longer yeah. was a, a viable name yeah. in the U.S. radio market. Yeah, so you know, how that the, the switch happened because of that. I was doing an audition at WBCN. They were doing this next DJ contest, and uh, those in Boston uh, who may remember WBCN, uh, it was a heritage alternative rock station, and I was... Uh, the second, the second finalist for the for the gig, so they wound up hiring me to do uh, fill-ins and uh, weekend stuff. Uh, but Oedipus, who was the program director, legendary program director, after I did my first audition, as Haji goes, "Hey, you were great. We definitely want to have you back." You're going to change your name. Yeah. <laughs> How about Sully? All right, then. Yeah. There, there's, <laughs> there's not enough of those in Boston. Yeah, right. <laughs> I know Sully. <laughs> Mike has asked us not to, but we have uh, obtained access to some old air checks of oh. Mike that we'll just be sprinkling in through the f through the show. Oh joy! Yeah, <laughs> don't worry. You won't, you won't have to listen to it until it's broadcast. So <laughs> I'll put it in post. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Hi, BCN. Hi. I was just wondering if you could play some Prodigy for me. I think I can get some Prodigy on for you. Who's this? Uh, Betty. Betty, what are you doing? Uh, nothing much really. Really, no rages. No. Are you hitting on my girlfriend? Yes, I'm hitting on your girlfriend. That's what radio guys do. Hi, BCN. I want to hear The Beautiful People by Marilyn Manson. Are you beautiful? I am beautiful. Okay. Can you send me naked pictures? I could. Actually, I posed for an artist completely nude. That is awesome. I know. All of a sudden, I'm appreciating art outside of comic books. Can I have your babies? I don't know if you want those. They'll come out smoking and drinking beer and not being productive. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> the, uh, the other big reason that we're having Mike on is uh, a lot of people don't know this. Mike is an expert on um, political relations with the country of Venezuela. <laughs> okay. And he's here to talk about the geopolitical ramifications about the military threats uh, your president just lobbied towards Venezuela. So, he to, so, Mike, why don't you talk in depth about the Venezuela conflict and how Trump is going to intervene militarily? He's threatening to turn off the sit-go sign. <laughs> That's what it is. That's about it. We, we, we were planning, and we will talk about the, the North Korea stuff. Let's call it stuff. Or do we just go with the fire and fury? Fire and fury. Yeah, it rolls off the tongue. I think that was, wasn't that James Taylor's follow-up to fire and rain? <laughs> I thought that was the uh, ping pong ball movie. Oh, right. <laughs> so, but, but then, you know, just to mess up with... You know, little shows like ours after we do all the planning. I'm just going to make threats against Venezuela right now. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. All right. That was hilarious. Let's go to the next topic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We, you you want to go right into the F&H, this, this week in F&H, the breakdown? Yes. Yeah. We must satiate our five fans. <laughs> five fans. Well, I guess the, the douchebag Nick, who, you know, uh, likes young women, also likes young boys and brought a 20-year-old to skate against a 62-year-old uh, defenseman. And um, I guess the highlight was uh, the return of Danton, who's a Mexican, where his brother Zach is a Mexican. Mm -hmm. um, um, Danton is a great goalie, and 
Zach is, uh, well, like I said, a Mexican who couldn't score on an ocean. Couldn't score on Biff. Anyways, so uh, that's it. The F&H update, not a lot going on. John was uh, was saddled with uh, Patty. Um who, by the way, I'm that Patty? You you were like Patty. I mean, when you when you think when you think hockey players in Southern California, you think six six, mid fifties, you know, black as night guy from Jamaica who got into hockey when his family moved to Toronto when he was twelve. That 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 that's that's hockey in Southern California at midnight. But that's the update. You know, I guess you know, I Biff didn't say if he was awful. He just you know said that I'm still leading the league in blind cats from Qatar, which is another story altogether. But uh, we, we like to do shout outs to the three people who listen to the show. <laughs> yeah. Now we will do shout outs to Mike's family tree. Let's start Go with. <laughs> oh. We'll be here all day. All right. So 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 Thoroughly. Joe, what are your thoughts on North Korea? How do we solve this thing? Man, that's a wacky old country, ain't it? <laughs> Boy, what a bunch of clowns. At it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kim Jong-un. I mean, yeah, it's it's been said on Twitter, it's the battle of like the dueling bad haircuts <laughs> you know, between Trump and Kim Jong-un. I don't know. I don't know if this is actually going to move the needle to any sort of actual uh, military action, you know, at least on America's part. I think it's just more of Trump stoking the fires on, on social media and on regular media, just to sort of keep his base, uh, you know, aware that, yes, he is going to be tough on North Korea, and boy, that North Korea better not do anything, especially for Guam. Did you see that he called the governor of Guam to congratulate him on the publicity that he's going to, that he's gotten? <laughs> right. It was a phone call. It was, it was, it was recorded. No, he, he truly, like, used it early. It's, it's just a reality show to him. Oh, it totally is. What I what I what I'm just trying to figure out uh, is why don't what what's Dennis Rodman doing to help uh, remedy the situation? <laughs> I forgot about <laughs> that. What's he doing? Well, uh, three years ago, he just showed up over there yeah. and, and and he became. He went, he went back like recently, like and, within the last six months. And he came back. He's like, he's a really good guy. You got to get to know him. It's like, do it first. You know, you're Dennis Rodman, so so anything that you say, we have to remember, is coming from the lips of Dennis Rodman. So that doesn't carry a lot of weight. It's a it's a tragedy. Tragedy. Uh, <laughs> Love that band. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, shout yeah. out to tragedy. John, you know, Mike, Mike's the one who said, "Oh, you got to go see these guys." So like, oh, I can't be as great as Mike. Can Mike we just described. talk about tragedy? Instead Can, of yes. Why, 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 why are you? Why about are we tragedy? here talking about North Korea? Honestly, we talk about stuff that people have been talking about all week long. I know we're doing it sort of for posterity, and so the jock doesn't have to spend money on a therapist <laughs> but it's, it's so actually kind of it's kind of old hat at this point it's like okay we get it we're liberals trump's bad he's crazy he does crazy things so what <laughs> like what are we going to do about it i don't know it's uh man i mean it's it's a crazy situation over there i hope that he doesn't nuke guam by he i mean donald trump <laughs> by accident. um but it's like i got a plan yeah you'll never see it coming i mean every day is a new news cycle you know we went is there still a trans ban on the military now is that sort of a thing is right well he he reiterated that the other day and and still the joint chiefs of staff are like yeah, we're we got this under control. We don't need to revisit this. I mean, right we now. have neo Nazis. I mean, sorry, alt right supporters taking to the streets in Virginia right now. I hate all the North Nazis. <laughs> yeah, right. Thank you. Somebody had to do that. Right. <laughs> so and and, oh, and just yeah, and I'm I'm waiting for the. For the POTUS tweets on, he, hey, stop the violence. Well, he did. He did that this way this morning. Um, but it was very milk toast, kind of like this hate in America has to stop. Period. Sad. But let me tell you point. about. But let's talk about Hillary and her emails for the next twenty. Which, years. by the way, is being reinvestigated. I guess there was a, uh, a U, uh, there was a U.S. District uh, Court judge who ruled that the State Department didn't go far enough in the investigation of Hillary Clinton's emails and because they only checked into her private server, and as far as Benghazi was concerned, and now they're going to check into her State Department emails. And this is all stemming from a um, right-wing watchdog's movement to get the email Hillary story perpetuated right. for eternity. And, well, and the great thing is, it's like this this week's Trump lapdog that was thrown to the wolves is Mitch McConnell for not getting his agenda passed. So it's like, okay, well, if you now throw this in, you spend more millions of dollars doing this, it's like, you want tax reforms, you want all these other things, but now we're really going to reinvestigate this. 
And again, they want to cut money for Meals on Wheels, but let's do the Benghazi <laughs> hearing all over again. The great, the greatest, hit, you know, it's like classic radio station in Boston. It's like they can never seem to play the hits enough as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. So I didn't mean to gloss over North Korea. I don't know if there's anything more you wanted to add about the no. North Korea situation. No, I mean, I mean personally, like the, the crazy thing is, that my mother-in-law was a North Korean refugee from North Korea to South Korea, and then immigrated here. And North Korea, like, South Korea, Marilyn Monroe. Sorry, no, <laughs> did, that's, a, that's never, my Niagara Falls. Now it's Two in things. everybody's head. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Two things: a, never apologize for your singing. We, we didn't start the fire in fury. Never apologize for the comedy. And still, there's always room for Billy Joel. As far as I'm concerned, there's always room for me. He's like Jello without the roofies. <laughs> <laughs> that was my Bill Cosby. Which, which isn't bad. Okay. Yes or no, Joe? Do you have the egg timer with you? No. Oh, sorry, Biff. Okay. Patriots. First first preseason game. Mike, thoughts? It was on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, did, did you watch? Did I you follow did, any of this? I did not see one second of it. See, it's preseason. Mike has a girlfriend that still likes him and talks to him and will be seen <laughs> in public. So I, I don't I don't blame you yeah, for seeing it. Gosh. What about you, Joe? What are your thoughts? Oh, wait, wait. No, I was going to say she knows sun, uh, Sundays during the regular season. Uh, right. It's, it's, you know, preseason. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Preseason is, d- d- it don't matter, man. What are you talking about? No, no. How far has the relationship progressed, Mike, where if there's a Thursday night game, do you tell her that the Sunday's open, or do you still get the four-hour window to go to the bar? Oh, hmm, that is a good question. <laughs> Since she just moved in uh, during the middle of the last season, that hasn't happened yet. But I will try and do a Jedi mind trick. There, there was we, we we when we lived in L.A. We went to Disney once a week, but you know on Sundays if we went, we went with the park open. I walked to the ESPN zone, watched the game, and came back. And there was one Sunday. Where it's now mid afternoon and it hits management that oh my god you've spent the whole day with us and it's Sunday and, you know what about the game and this is great and she foolishly mistakenly thought I was prioritizing the family over the Patriots <laughs> and then I didn't say anything it wasn't like I was pulling a bait or switch or that I was looking for you know the pants on the back of this but she got so mad at me when I said oh it's a bye week they, they don't have a game and then she she got mad because she foolishly thought I again was prioritizing the family <laughs> she was mad at herself well, let's be but honest. you were you right. were the Patriots are family they, <laughs> yeah. thank you see right me and Julian Edelman we are so much closer than he'll ever know. So, but uh, pregame, you know, uh, it was great. Jimmy Garoppolo, you know, played decent. Uh, none of the starters played at all. But of course, and and this was all around the internet. Tom Brady's just fucked up. I mean, he's on the sideline doing a full workout, going through his progression. I did hear about that. He's like doing like like line kicks, you know, yep. trying to keep up, you know, four four time, up and down, up and down. <laughs> right. He was keeping pace with the game as if he was on the field, like playing, like going. And you can see the guys on the bench, like all the other starters, are dressed like Gronkowski and Edelman and stuff. And they're always looking at him like, well, he's like the dance mom that's backstage, like mouthing the words to the yes. song. That the <laughs> yes. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I, he has never been acquainted with a dance mom, but that could <laughs> he not, should be. It could not be a more accurate statement. But yeah, well, and that's the thing. It's like the the whole the whole last week. It's like you know, is Garoppolo going through the motions? It's like he sees Brady at practice. He knows that it's not his last year. He knows he's not going to be here next year, and he knows he, if he is and he's franchised, he's still not going to fucking play. Mm-hmm. And it's one of those things. At one point, it's like, really, I'm, I'm I'm not competing for the job. I'm not even coming close to competing for the job. And yeah, he should be ready, but I don't fault the guy because it's like he's looking at the psychopath who <laughs> right. is standing on the sidelines during week one preseason, going through the whole progressions. It's like that. It's it's it is. It's a sickness. Yeah. Is there any other NFL talk going on besides the Patriots, or is it? Just the Patriots. Or Colin that, Kaepernick. Oh, I was going to say Ezekiel Elliott. Oh, yeah, yeah oh. go Ezekiel Elliott. Let's take Where it. Where he uh, gets, after how many years, uh, while this was being investigated, he uh, got suspended for six games for domestic violence? Yeah, it, it was It was 13, 13 or 14 months ago. The 911 call comes in. He, you know, he went all Chris Brown on his girlfriend. Now, I know who Ezekiel Elliott is, but for the audience, explain. Who is Ezekiel Elliott? Running back for the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, okay. See, I knew that. Yeah, and 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 the, and the great thing is, the, you know, the funny thing is, the t- the two people uh, 
who who were the biggest you know Goodell supporters was uh, Jerry was, Jones was Jerry Jones and Robert Kraft yeah. like during the whole thing with Ray Rice and mm-hmm. stuff like that it was Kraft who goes on the CBS morning shows it's like well we could handle it different but he's a good guy and this and that the other thing and then the two teams that are now like the Patriots the last couple of years. With, with that farce, yeah, like like the same thing as Benghazi, really just just a made up nothing, and and it's great because Jerry Jones was one of the first people who was still by the side of of Goodell saying, hey, you know, the, he's just doing the right thing, even, but now he's the one who's saying, you know, crying poor and wanting, right. it's like, dude, it's like at what point does one NFL team or owner stand up and say, yeah, this is horrible. The suspension is great, or not great, but it's like, yeah, we have to stop smacking women around. We have to put domestic violence uh, as a priority of, of things over anything else. Also, uh, Jerry Jones is starting to look like the uh, evil guy from Poltergeist 2. <laughs> <laughs> he's starting to get that melted face look. Well, you know, oh, so he's not the guy at the end of Indiana Jones. That too. Okay. Oh, yeah. They're interchangeable. You never oh, see him in the same room. Right. It's the same guy. Mm. <laughs> and still, he's got a way to go to be the Atlanta Falcons' Arthur Blank. Like, that guy. <laughs> the, 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 right. like, 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 one eye doesn't fully open. And it's, I mean, he looks like the perfect villain. Like, absolute perfect. Perfect, perfect build. Yeah, but Jerry Jones. Uh, and then the other thing, like, you know, I was talking to Joe about, it's like, I love, we talked last week about, like, the Colin Kaepernick thing. Yes. Aside from all the 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 First Amendment rights, and it's like, and we talked at length about, again, like, you know, Asika is beating people, and he's still going to be welcome back. Colin mm-hmm. Kaepernick is, like, like the fans in Dallas are outraged that, that Asika can't play these six games. It would probably go down to four. Because all he did was beat up a woman <laughs> Where on the other hand, how dare Colin Kaepernick, you know, extend his first right amendments? But here's the great thing is, so Spike Lee is the champion of justice, and he is organizing a rally at the NFL offices in a couple weeks, and he tweets out, we're going to have a rally in support of the misspelled Kaepernick. (laughs) I think Colin Kaepernick has misspelled Kaepernick a couple of times. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, it's not an That's easy a hard name. name. I'll give go it ahead, to spe- him. No, right now, spell it. Don't look at your sheet. Go ahead. Go. Well, that, that's not for his name. That's for my spelling ability. Oh, I don't right. spell my name right. You misspelled way when you texted me <laughs> on the way. that You <laughs> came out W-Y. I, I was abbreviating. <laughs> I was just... on my Wyoming. <laughs> Hey, no, seriously. Right. You can only use the letter A so many times before that button just doesn't work anymore. Right. So I'm, I'm economizing. Yeah. F and A. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so so that's that. that so I, I don't know if we went past. We were asked to limit Patriot Talk to three minutes. But hey, that, that we're I can trim it down. About, don't worry, Biff. No. <laughs> <laughs> so now let's get back to our guest, Mike has used his radio career to springboard into a career of trivia. Yes. Um, So, uh, after the radio career ended, uh, I was purchasing a home, and I needed something else. I needed some more income. Wait, the the radio career ended? (laughs) You you go into my my sound effects library? (laughs) Yeah. You like that? Uh, so when my career was ending, and I eventually was purchasing a home, yeah, I needed you know more income as we everybody does, and I'm like, well, what else do I know how to do? Oh, can, uh, I got into the IT world, so I was like, okay, what else do I know how to do? Um, well, I know how to do radio. I don't want to get back into radio, mm. and I'd been going to bars just like uh, most people do around here and drink, <laughs> and uh, started playing trivia with this company called Stump Trivia, and um, went on their website, and filled out an application, and then. Within a day, I was hired. Great. And I uh, turned that into just... But a- hired for what? <laughs> Let's get yeah. into the specific. Right. I, was, I was hired to host trivia at okay. bars. Okay, all right, sorry. all right. Sorry. <laughs> um, I didn't know if it was a swipe left. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I posted down on Craigslist and got hired right away, too. <laughs> Nothing to do with trivia. <laughs> so, Yes. I uh, turned that into a uh, hosting trivia bars career. That I, when I first started, I was you know doing it four nights a week, hosting uh, charity events on the weekends, things like that. Now I just do it a little bit, you know, a couple times a week, uh, just for fun. You know, plus the paycheck, it pays very well. Yeah. So, so we're great. gonna have Mike. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I said, great. <laughs> Over. 
You know, we're going to do a whole sideshow. We like Mike's not leaving after we tape this. He's taped down to the chair. Right. Door's but, locked. You know, but we're going to uh, do a, a whole thing on trivia. But I mean, is, is this still a big thing? Yes, uh, it, people uh, there. There do have regulars that show up every week. Uh, one of my places does like theme nights uh, where we will, you know, do all Star Wars trivia or all Disney trivia for a particular night. And it's they they have to open up other rooms for the amount of people. Like there are thirty teams of people playing. Wow! It's so it still has uh, it's still popular. And, and is there a lot of crossover between the Star Wars and Disney people, or are those two different crowds? Well, since Disney owns them both, right? Right? <laughs> yeah. Now Trek and, and Star Wars, those would be. Uh, oh, we go outside like, and do Thunderdome just to bring in another yeah. sci-fi franchise. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. Where's Where's the worst place you've done trivia? Um. Well, there was a place in Lowell that I used to do it uh, that I wasn't a total fan of just because it was the, the, where I had to do it. Like, I didn't have room to put up the PA and stuff that I needed on top of uh, whatever hardware I needed. There wasn't a lot of room. Plus, there was no air conditioning in the place. And uh, w- the one time, uh, which, like, it's what really turned me off to this place. Uh, too many Portuguese. Too many Portuguese. That's right. Yes, too yeah. many. Did those darn Portuguese. Yeah, speaking hey, of without, Portuguese. without air conditioning, holy mackerel. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I was very sweaty. Yeah. You know, people get excited when they have the answer before the even the questions even finish. They're writing down their answer, they're turning it in, and one guy comes up and slams it down on my, the keyboard of my computer, shorts out everything mm. in the middle of it. And I get yelled at for being unprofessional when I yelled at the guy for wrecking my shit. No. I was like, what? Right. So that was the worst place uh, that I've... Uh, now don't give Lola a bad rep. I mean, it's no, there's got a so lot much to like going... about Lola. Yeah, there is. Right. I don't know what. <laughs> I thought that was their slogan, right? <laughs> there's a lot to <laughs> like about Lola. Lola. I'm I'm house hunting in Lowell a couple weeks ago, and I'm talking to Joe on the phone. <laughs> Literally, I'm talking to Joe, and a siren goes off like a cop chase. And he goes, "Oh, that must be the Lowell anthem." <laughs> like a dick. Before we move off of Mike, I wanted to do something based on his radio experience. Yeah, let's have it. All right. I can devise this little game where I chose five random songs for him to talk up as if he were a DJ at the famed WBCN, or you could pick any any sort of location, but I prefer WBCN. Make sure you get the call letters in there, okay. time and temperature, if there's any traffic updates. So I'm, what I'm going to do right now <laughs> is I'm going to hand him a card. He, he hasn't seen what songs I've chosen for him, so I'm going to hand him a card with the time that he has to use to talk up the song before he hits the post, which is when they start singing, usually. So, here we go. Here's the first one, and um, I'm just going to give him a couple of seconds to kind of laugh it off or whatever. So, here is the first song. Uh, take it away, Mike. Alrighty. 104.1 WBCN, The Rock of Boston. This December, they will be back at the House of Blues doing their cr- annual Christmas shows. You get tickets, get them through Ticketmaster. It is the Mighty Mighty Boston's The Impression That I Get on 104.1 WBCN. I haven't done this in forever. That was I'm great. not even hitting the post. How about now? <laughs> that was expert. All really? right, so now we're going to take it through the decades. Hold for applause. Yeah, right. So here's the second one. We're going to take it through the decades. We're not going to just reserve it to the 90s when he was at his prime. But here's our song number two. All righty, 104.1 WBCN. This song will never, ever get pay- played on this station. <laughs> and if it is in the future, it'll be called the Rick Roll because the internet likes to beat the shit out of stuff into the ground. Rick Astley, never going to give you up on 104.1 WBCN. No oh, I wish the song would never end. <laughs> <laughs> it does it in my heart. Oh, right. All right, so I'll let that fade out. Okay, here's song number three. We're going further back in wait, time. Wait, wait, let's have a planet or, or, or the Florida station. Or an XPL. Throw an okay, XPL. Yeah, right. XPL. Okay. Well, I mean, you can also change your style up based on the decade in which you're presenting the song. It doesn't necessarily have to be this decade <laughs> okay. or that decade. But All here right. we go. Here's song number three. 91.3 WXPL, Fitchburg State Radio. You can hear us in the parking lot, and that's it. Hey, you know that new sound you're looking for? <laughs> well, this is in it. We're going to steal this, okay? <laughs> it's Chuck Berry featuring Marty McFly, Johnny B. Good, XPL. Yes. <laughs> Nailed it. Thank God. I, was, I, was, well, I, 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 was, I had faith in you when I wrote this. I was like, he's going to make the Back to the Future reference. And he did. Because he's awesome. Martin. That's real applause. That, that was the sound effect applause. That right. was our studio audience losing it. All right, this one, we're, we're taking it way back. I don't even think they had radio. At the, well, no, they, they, there, they, is they, there they, even a post in this? There, uh, you know, right. I gave you the time frame. All right. You're, You're the pro. Go. You're the pro. All right, I'm the right. pro. Here we go. Uh, wait, wait, which, uh, which one? I will do uh, WZOU on this All right, here we go. WZOU, yeah. uh, song number four. 
94.5 WZOU. Rush is going to be doing this title as a song on their debut album about 40 years from now. From 1939, Glenn Miller, In the Mood, 94.5 WZOU. All right, you kind of trampled through the post there, but that's okay. It's an instrumental. <laughs> you are all over the lyrics. When the bwap wah, that's the post, okay? Oh, Everybody that, knows no, that. No, that's a joke. Right, right. right. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's a sound effect button on a jock's machine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and now finally for song number five, like Stephen Hawking farting. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's Stephen Hawking farting. So, Everybody knows so, that. Well, yeah, come on. That was more of an Einstein oh, fart, actually. Uh, all right, and for the last, uh, I hold in my hand the last song. Uh, <laughs> stop with the machine noises. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, this one's just for Mike. All right, 104.1 WBCN. This band is the greatest band of all time. If we're talking local or recent news, excuse me, the studio, they studio in Montreal, just burnt down where they recorded this song back in 1981. It is Rush, Limelight, off of Moving Pictures on uh, whatever station I said at the beginning of this break. 104.1 WBCN. I love Rush a lot. <laughs> like I even needed yeah. to write the time as to how long it takes to, before the oh. lyrics kick in. But that was it. So that was just a little dose of what you missed if it, you weren't alive and in Boston back in the day. Yeah. And by the day, I mean the 90s. You know, uh, that Thursday. Right. That one day. It was a Saturday at 2 in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> was no People are driving home drunk. Right. You're welcome. Right. They're, your they're, in a, they're in Achilles drive through. <laughs> yeah. uh, one, one of my favorite things when Mike was on BCN and doing like nights and weekends, you know, Know, our band would have like a jam thing, and afterwards we're just standing around drinking, listening to Mike, and we were like calling him. It was it was great because it's like two in the morning. There's not a lot of calls going in, and you you could just call Mike and say, "Hey, can you play this?" I remember it's like this goes out to Junk and Dan at their roller skating party. And right now, and it's That's like, right. You gotta put out that radio for Hey, us. everybody, hello. It, it was it was it was a lot of fun. And, and as far as Rush goes, as it applies to Carnival personnel, Joe and I have one and one goal only to get as many women listeners as at a Rush concert. Three. Right. <laughs> so we can't count on our significant others. So You're looking for the elusive Getty Corns. <laughs> yeah, right. right. Yeah. Getty Corns. Is that what you call them? That's what they are called. The female Rush fans are called Getty Corns because they're mythical and they don't you know. Oh, right. I, I thought they were hostages. <laughs> right. Oh, good times. No, that's... Temporary layoffs. Good times. A credit ripoffs. Good times. Scratching and surviving. Good times. Hanging in a trailer. Good times. Ain't we, we lucky we got them? Doom, boom, 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 boom. Good, Good times. I totally want to buy that painting that Jason did. <laughs> <laughs> I really want that painting yeah. for my house. All right, though. That thing. <laughs> what, what if you come? What if what if what if one of your management unit comes home and sees that? You know, uh, how long does the relationship last after that? After I introduce her to what good times was, maybe for forever. Uh, that's sad. You have to introduce. Hey, by the way, uh, you introduce your girlfriend and good times. Good times, girlfriend. <laughs> Jay, this is JJ. Here's Penny. She turns out to be Janet Jackson in the future. Right. <laughs> oh, don't man. get used to John Amos. No. Oh, nice. Oh, no, James. <laughs> hey. Damn. Or as Gilbert Garfield would say, damn, damn, damn. Hey, that, that pipeline in Alaska wasn't going to lay itself. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> Mike, you come from radio. You're a professional. You know that all this equipment comes yes. at a premium. Yes. And, and, you know, and it's like it doesn't pay for itself on so my good looks alone. <laughs> uh, That's why we have to now throw a wrench in this monkey work. Take two. <laughs> That's why now we have Why? to stop. Right, exactly. I'm not good without um, anything. We're going to stop this train, and we're going to uh, take a moment to reflect on our defunct sponsor of the week. This is The Rock, the rock of Boston. WBCN. Opie and Anthony weekday mornings. Okay, terrific. Are you insane? Weekday afternoons from 3 to 7. Tuncher and Rich have your Patriots tickets. Notice the gum in his mouth. This is the sound of absolute frustration. The Rock of Boston and home Wanna go to the New England Patriots. The one and only Rock of Boston. 104.1 WBCN.
Wow, that defunct sponsor. Sure, it was defunct, wasn't it? That's or, my favorite. Yeah. No, our, our marketing department works tirelessly. Who are the ad wizards that came up with that one? <laughs> to, to find the spot. I mean, and it's great. You would think that they wouldn't have a budget to advertise no. on a show like us, especially <laughs> being at defunct. Rates, and being all. defunct and all. But somehow, each and every week, Joe tirelessly works at it and finds the defunct sponsor that comes up with just enough money yeah. to make it worth it. Do you know while. how hard it is to cold call companies whose phones have been disconnected <laughs> for, for a decade. Right. A lot of busy signals on my day. So now we're going to do one of the most hacky radio trivia, drunken, stupor, stupid things to do that I love. Uh, we're going to play the Mount Rushmore game. For those who don't know, you're an idiot. Really, you can't figure it out. Like, if you don't even know the game and somebody says, I'm a millennial, what's Mount Rushmore? (laughs) Well, it's these three old slave owners. Three? (laughs) There were three of them? No, no, only three of them owned slaves. Oh, that's right. Yeah, see? Uh, Did I I go to History Channel? Yes. Okay, so there's four historical figures. One of them wanted to own slaves. That's about as close close enough. Show our hands. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I mean, seriously. Have you ever, like... Who among us hasn't had a relative in their heritage, <laughs> much like Ben Affleck, own slaves? Thank you. Exactly. Right. Um, but, w- w- you know, what we're going to do is basically, you know, I-, I threw the guys a couple topics and stuff like that. And sometimes it's easy. Sometimes it's like, okay, it's, a, it's, it's pretty much a, a give me who these four be. But some of the ones that I put on the list, and we'll start, uh, you know, spaceships. And we'll start with you, Joseph. Mm-hmm. Four best spaceships in sci-fi. Yeah, Enterprise. Um, easy. Yeah, exactly. Easy, Slam dunk. Um, uh, the uh, the alien spaceship. I suck. I don't know. Is it the Prometheus? Is Prometheus. It? Prometheus. Yeah, okay, go. thank you. Um, good job, Joe. Wait, are we talking 1979 or the recent? Yeah. Oh, no, no. This is 79. 79 yeah. is not the Prometheus. Oh, it's not the Prometheus? Well, I don't remember what it was. I'll go fuck myself then. <laughs> um, Nerd. Uh, the Millennium Falcon, which is, you know, it's a yeah, it's a spaceship. It flies through space. Yeah, that qualifies. So the Millennium it's, Falcon. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, yeah that's, that's, that's a spaceship. That's one of the give me's. Yeah. And the Orville premiering this <laughs> fall on Fox. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, nicely done. <laughs> I just want to be Seth MacFarlane's friend. Nicely done. What Won't about- you look at me, Seth? Oh, gosh. What, what about you, Mike? What uh, are you after? Well, I went with the easy one first, the Millennium Falcon. For obvious reasons, it's just a, such the an iconic ship. greatest ever. Did the Kessel Run in 14 parsecs. 12. 14? 12. Nerd. <laughs> that, that is my favorite line 12. from Force Awakens. Oh. When, when, when Ray says, it's like, oh, this is Millennium Falcon. It did. And the look of disgust on Han Solo's face. Like, I completely absolutely. forgot about that scene. The look of disgust. 12. You know, <laughs> oh. which, which, this goes to show you what a nerd I am. A parsec. Is a distance is a measure of time, not it's distance. It's a it's a measure of distance, oh, di- not a measure of oh, time. Oh right, right, right. Sorry. And because of the thruster ability for the Falcon to get close enough to planets and then use their gravitational pull, he can he can do the run in a shorter period of time, thus a faster period of time. But that was a big selling point: is that he could get close enough to gravitational pulls a planet, use it to slingshot him from point A to point B. If I say one more word, by the I way. Will Never. I'm, okay. I'm going to change. My, I'm sorry to, 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 okay. to trample over your uh, selections, but I'm going to change my answer from the Prometheus or whatever the fuck I was trying to go for for the alien uh, as one of the starships uh, to the satellite of love. On, uh, that is a fantastic answer. Yes, fantastic Thank answer. You. I'll take that. Right. Uh, I'll edit that in. You do, you, it's going to be seamless. You won't even know what happened. Mark the time code for his uh, his uh, ex- explanation of the twelve parsecs because the Han Solo movie will be coming out, and they should. They should call that in the movie. Yeah, right. Okay, yeah. to see if he's right. It's right. got. It's got to be because my, they've changed so much things that are canon in the, in those movies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, like I did not have the Orville. I don't even. want By the way, did we even on. get to Mike? We, we only just no. did the first. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have uh, the other Falcon. Ones, the, the Falcon, uh, the Serenity from Firefly. Mm. Oh, great call! Depending on if you watch the Japanese or the American version of Star Blazers, yes! the, Argo the Argo or the uh, the, the Amato. The Argo or the Amato. Fire yes, I am from. Blazers. And the last one was just for me from the song Cygnus X won by Rush, the Rosinante. <laughs> you wow. would. That, that, and seriously, first of all, Mike, I love you. First of all, because honestly, when I put that on the list, I'm like, 
Mike's going to have the archive. I know, because that was our jam. Like, when yes. we were kids. Like that, like that. The only other one that I would swap out that you guys haven't had that you are completely wrong about. The Great Space Coaster? Thank you! Oh, my God! <laughs> well, get on board! Yeah, right. <laughs> the Battlestar oh, yes. Galactica. Yeah. How do you not have the Battlestar Galactica? The greatest show in the history of television. I'm not talking that crappy four-year one on Sci-Fi Network. I'm talking the, the two-year one, one with right. Rick Springfield, baby! That's right. Rick, Rick Springfield was in there. Rick one? Springfield was Starbucks' brother killed in the pilot episode. That is awesome. I did not know that. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> and, and, and women have had sex with me. <laughs> Semi-willingly. That, that's the shocking thing. What's on your Mount Rush? more Jacques? Uh, it would be you know the Argo from Star Blazers Battlestar, Garac- <laughs> Battlestar Galactica Battlestar Galactica was the Japanese version <laughs> Battlestar <Go on>. Galactica <laughs> uh, the Falcon and the Starship Enterprise you know, I have a son with the middle name Tiberius. <laughs> right. There's like a zero to less than zero chance the, uh, the the USS Enterprise was not going to be on there. By the way, all very great original answers. Yeah, Thank no. You. Hey, <laughs> not all of us can pull the Orville out of their ass <laughs> or an obscure Rush song. You ever have an Orville pulled out of your ass? No. <laughs> you know, like while we're, while we're talking about Rush, again, every song off moving pictures is technically not obscure. <laughs> I, I thought it was. That's my bad. What do we got next? Rush songs. <laughs> I'm out. Well, th- this is actually difficult for me. I can, I can. Well, don't go anywhere, Joe, because so, yours is next. So I'll be last. I just went when I was re- doing this. I went uh, for the the first three that came to mind, and then I went for one that I know would uh, be a great topic for you guys. I went uh, Red Barchetta. Thank you. I went Subdivisions. Okay. I went The Anarchist on their last album they did, Clockwork Angels. And then off the album Presto, I did Anagram for Mongo. Because any song written by Rush that references something from Blazing Saddles Agreed. must be on the list. Agree. Anagram for Mongo. Telegram for Mongo. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I failed to mention in our theme songs episode about um, Alex Karras. Uh, oh, being Webster, he was also Mongo. Everybody knows mm-hmm. he was Mongo in Blazing Saddles. And everybody knows Mongo like candy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. He could be on our podcast. Alex Karras is alive? What? Is right. he in the room? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> he loved our podcast because we got lots of candy here. Uh, uh, eye candy. Oh, snap. <laughs> That's why we're in podcast land. Uh, okay, Joe. Weird Al songs. The Mount Rushmore of oh Weird Al God. songs. You got to say Yoda. You have to say eat it. You, uh, mm, no, not the, the are your personal brush. No, you, I mean, I, I'm I'm doing this sort of. I have to do this on a global level. This is a, a public service. I can't just throw any four so songs. You you're not going to go Amish Paradise. No, I'm not going to go. She never told me she was a mime. Like that was the. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to do Dare to Be Stupid or whatever it was. That Dare you to Be the, Stupid was okay. That was in the Transformers movie. If yeah, I right, it was. It was at the end of the Transformers movie. Uh, I'm going to say Yoda. I'm going to say uh, white and nerdy. Just throw it on there because, you know, that's just... It's great. My, that my just, voice love that. Uh, and I'll even say, like, smells like Nirvana. I, I, you know what? I'm going to kind of keep it simple, you know, keep it safe, be all inclusive. I don't want to go too esoteric on here. I, I don't know if I swap out Yoda, but you got to you get, you gotta remember, Joe, it's all about the Pentiums, baby. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> that, that, that would be mine. That might be the mountain on which Mount Rushmore <laughs> is built. <laughs> Okay, so this might, again, be more for Joe than, than Mike or I, and it's not an easy one. TV game shows. Oh, really? I'll let you guys go first, because, you know... Do you want this word, or do you want everybody's gonna, You go, Mike. Everybody's right. waiting with bated breath All on right. what I have to say. So, um, I wrote down a, a couple classics and then one new one. First off, game show, Battle of the Network Stars, the 70s version. That I, I lived for that show growing up. Wow. Uh, I just remember Gabe Kaplan in short shorts. Oh, if you have the chance, YouTube, uh, I think Gabe Kaplan was part of this, and, um, oh, shoot, he, Baba Black Sheep was the TV show. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, had, he had the Duracell guy who would put it on his shoulder. Um, oh, yes. I'm stumped. Uh, uh, yeah, he got in an argument, like almost to fist, like wow. almost fist. You can find this on YouTube between Gabe Kaplan and that guy yes. over something that happened in Battle of the Network Stars, the '70s version. Gene Rayburn Match Game. Yeah. Yep. On my list. Stole my answer. On my list. <laughs> <laughs> Press your luck. Oh, okay. stole my answer. <laughs> whammies, <to> whammies, <laughs> whammies. And just because I love it, and everybody says I should be on the show, Beach Shazam. I love that show. Oh, oh right, right. Have you seen this one yet? 
Is it out yet, or just yeah? I, I've seen out? a couple episodes. Yeah, okay. I haven't seen it yet. Is it good? Yeah, it's it's not bad. Um, uh, I, I I think I've missed one song. That's why I love it. Love it because it's you know, uh, it's, from my background being the the radio guy, just all these songs like within a second. I'm like, it's this. It's this. Well, it's it, this. But when you're under the hot lights, man, it all changes. <laughs> True, Mike. I'm sure, quite sure you you've hung on each and every word of Carnival Personnel, but you heard the episode where Joe broke down his Wheel of Fortune. Of bucket. course. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah, no, okay. All right. So we don't. <laughs> <laughs> have to retry that. Go ahead. The, the only one that I, I, I think I had is the original Hollywood Squares. Wait, one. Sh- the Ron Ron has four. Uh, no, 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 no. But you the guys are right. uh, the, the Wheel of Fortune. The Wheel of Fortune. Price is right. You like because like, like, Price is right. Well, no, which oh, Wheel yeah. of Fortune? The current one that's been on for twenty years, or when uh, Chuck Woolery was hosting it back in the late seventies. Right. The, the, the current, you know. I just, just wanted to drop that knowledge. Just because of my yeah, there you go. <laughs> Seriously, the man great. after my own wheel. <laughs> you know, but but uh, honestly, the Price is Right was just we've talked about this in the past. I mean, part of missing school. You know, was getting home and watching like the Price yes. is Right. I mean, that that was always great. You know, I had the match game, but honestly, you know, one of the reasons like I love like you know Gilbert's show is when he talks about the people from the '60s and the '70s and in the original Hollywood Squares. I loved it as a kid watching it, but as an adult, when you see it on the reruns and you know they're all fucking hammered. Oh, like just gone. <laughs> yeah, my four, I guess, would be again Match Game. Great, another show where they were all wasted. They would tape. The three before lunch, and then after lunch would be Thursday and Friday, because they would tape shows, you know, five shows a week, in one, five shows in one day. So the Thursday and Friday episodes were always the more ribald and more off the chain than the other three. But I'll say Match Game, I will say uh, Price is Right, because, mm. yeah, it, it's what I grew up, it's probably the first game show I've ever seen in my life. I'm going to have to go with Family Feud. Because yes, I, because I own two versions of the board game <laughs> from and the seventies, right? Oh yeah, so everybody, yeah, right. How many uh, people did Richard Dawson give herpes to? Uh, <laughs> Here's a smooch, <laughs> boom. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a sounds like a question on Family Feud. Yeah. Uh, Top answers. Right, ninety-eight. Well, ninety-eight. Wow. Uh, and then of course, uh, Wheel of. Fortune. <laughs> yeah, I was on Wheel of Fortune, and I got to give props to that, and I won money, and it was great. Let's stop being nerds. Okay. Mount Rushmore video game characters. <laughs> Jack, you go first. Ah, uh, let's see. Just because I threw it out doesn't mean I was prepared to answer the question. I only got one. <laughs> I haven't been prepared. Okay. Uh, Miss Pac-Man. Without a doubt, you know. Mi- 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 yeah, t- exactly. She had that beauty mark. She like, really Very did. Cindy Crawford. You know, if it was uh, My Little Pony, those are known as cutie marks. Same, but close. All right. We were devolving we into some sort of a weird <laughs> tangent here, but moving, go on. Moving on. Or stop. Uh, because I got into the uh, into the things like later, a lot of my favorite characters, you know, probably Chris Redfield from the uh, from the Resident Evil games. I can't say, or can I? Can I? What, what, what's the judges ruling? Really? Can I say Batman from the three Arkham sure. games in, in the last? I have no problem. No, I mean he's he's been in a lot of video games. But but the yeah he you know there's a, there's a new one out now one of those um you know it's an, a VR game and answer the questions as you go through it type thing yeah it's like a Telltale game. Telltale thank you yeah. thank you that that that's a new one the little guys are playing I would say so so Miss Pacman and. Is the, is the ship in Galaga? Is that cool? Yes, right. Thank you. The ship in Galaga. <laughs> Let's call it the Argo. You're right. Argo, fuck yourself. <laughs> all right. Mike, what do you got? Uh, I'm not a gamer. Uh, so I could go with all the cliche Pac Man, Donkey Kong, things like that. But I'm just going with the one guy. Uh, this is going to be like one big on Round this Rushmore. Is, yes. Jeremy Roenick from the NHL 94. Ah, game. Ah, <laughs> That's it. We'll take right. it. He was like Bo Jackson in Tech Mobile, and uh, he just, you know, he was dominant. Unstoppable. Yeah, unstoppable. My four, I guess, are going to be Mario from the Mario series. In my day, we used to win <laughs> uh, Mario Link from the Legend of Zelda series. Super Joe from Bionic Commando. There you go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and um, little Joe from Punch Out. <laughs> little yes, little oh, Mac. Little, 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 <laughs> little Mac. From, little, little Mac from little Punch Mac. Out. Little yes, Mac. you just yeah. Thanks for filling that blank for me. <laughs> uh, that's what she said. Hey. Oh. <laughs> okay. Now now for all our friends outside the Boston area, Mike the. 
the the Mount Rushmore of Boston sports figures. Can Bobby Orr be on there four times? Y- yes, he can. <laughs> That's my answer. I have him on there right. three times. <laughs> and then right, come on, come on, let's have it. Uh, okay, so Bobby Orr. Yeah. He just yeah, just because Brady, Tom Brady, of course, he should be on there. Five Super Bowls, big fucking uh, deal. I know. Uh, let's see, Yaz. Yeah, it's interesting, and um, I'm just trying to get one from each right, uh, right. thing. And, uh, and, and who's from the Revolution? Right. From the Revolution, <laughs> yeah. that one guy with a lot of consonants in his name. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, I go six <laughs> uh, Just because it would be funny to see the Frankenstein-like shoulders of him, I'll go Kevin McHale. No, okay, I'll take. I mean, I would go Red Auerbach. I mean, Red yeah. Auerbach was the guy who put all that yeah. together. What do you What do you got? I don't know. It, it, go just just do it. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, Bobby Orr, Brady, Red Auerbach, and then when it comes to the sock, it's like honestly, is it David Ortiz? He's the only one who was on three World Series mm-hmm. teams. I mean, I mean, Yaz never won a World Series. You know, the Splinter Splinter never won a World Series. So it's kind of hard to say like who th- you know that would be because you don't want to discredit that. But I, I would, I would probably put you know Ortiz, you know, or Bill Russell, who only played. You know, the, you yeah, see, he got what, two Celtics, eleven championships, on, and a thirteen. Your yeah. career. Guy played 13 years in the NBA, wins 11 championships. How do you not put that guy in? Plus, we're in Boston, and we should have one black guy on there just to say, just so we can say that we're not all racist. Like, if I come up and I say, okay, Wes Welker, Julie Edelman, Tom Brady, and Larry Bird, you know what I mean? Like, of course you did. Right, right. right. You drum drunk and Sully. <laughs> I'm gonna. Mine might be the like the Bizarro World version of the Mount Rushmore of Boston sports. I'm gonna go Terry O'Reilly. Yeah, thank you. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go uh, Bill Buckner. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy, he's been forgiven. I'm well, gonna, no, yeah. that's not even funny because about four years ago, you hurt when he yeah. tried to commit suicide. He jumped in front of a bus, went right through his legs. Yeah. Oh! I'm gonna go Len Bias. <laughs> oh wow! Wow! And uh, Tony Eason. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Tony. Uh, no, Rod, Rod, oh, Rod Ross. Yeah, why don't you just go uh, Rod, uh, 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 Dick McPherson, who just died? No, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go uh, Rod Ross. But no, we, we. I figured with all the uh, all the, the uh, things you didn't go, Aaron Hernandez. On. Uh, <laughs> oh, Aaron wow, Hernandez. Yeah. that would have been a okay. killer pick. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Wow. I take that back because everybody. Yeah, cause he he kinda... died an innocent man <laughs> in the eyes of the state of. He Massachusetts. died. Oh, okay, so let's let's. An so we got man. Len Bias. <laughs> Len Bias. Aaron Hernandez, <laughs> Bill Buckner, and, and, and Terry Ryan. Terry Ryan. There we, 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 oh, dude, that is great. All right, let's, <laughs> let, let, let's we'll wrap this up with one last one. Right. Uh, superheroes. Uh, I'm going to go Batman, uh, Superman, Wonder Woman, <laughs> and uh, Aquaman, because he can talk to fish. <laughs> Mike, we're trying to be serious here. We're talking about superheroes, about Rushmore, and you're making a joke of it. <laughs> uh, where, where do you go, Mike? Uh, because I have him tattooed on me, the uh, Gambit from go. the X Men, uh, Deadpool, uh, the Crow. He's I, taking ladies. Yes, he I am. <laughs> uh, the Crow and John McClane from Die Hard because he is super. <laughs> Did he um, didn't lose superhero status after the fifth Die Hard movie. Or? No, I love them all. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> Put down the knife. I mean, it's obviously Batman, Superman. Though I have a Green Lantern tattoo on my finger. Because, you know, don't forget. In brightest day and darkest night, no evil shall take my sight. Let all those who worship evil might fear the power of Green Lantern's light. Um, but I'm going Nightwing. Again, having a child named after Nightwing. Kind of yeah. hard to, to not get on there. And then if I'm going to um, kind of, you know, go... Uh, it depends how off the, off the tracks we're getting. I would go Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah. Who I think is the greatest Jedi of all time. You know, but that's me. And when I was putting together the list, I was thinking, you're my only hope. <laughs> so, <there. laughs> Mike, I don't, again, where you, where you listen to yeah. each and every podcast, yes. you know now it comes time for the video, for the, for random the, video review yes, of the week. Yes, where you something grab, like that. Grab something from behind us. It, Mike, all, will you do the you. honors? Yeah, right. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. I'll hold your beer. I don't want to spill you're a beer. Drunk. Again. I'll hold your beer. <laughs> you lush. If you, for those of you who, who don't know and love He Joe looks like he's being like. held under arrest or something. He's like, he's got his hands up. He's oh, like, I don't know. I don't want to touch anything. Get me out of here. All right. So so he, he did he did revert back to the Nintendo Entertainment. Ah, uh, I can see. I can see. Is that mine? Uh, it looks like he went for. Uh, I'm going to say. Uh, it's Batman? No, but you are in the bees. Oh, uh, 
bases loaded. I don't know. I give up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, I just mentioned this game. Bionic Commando. This was an arcade game. It got ported over to the NES back in the day by Capcom. It's wonderful. You're trying to infiltrate the Nazis, but they're not really the Nazis because you can't have Nazi imagery in a Nintendo game. Mm-hmm. You have to go to these different bases, and you can't uh, jump, so you have to use your bionic arm, which extends like a coil and then grapples on. So like a large grappling hook, and you, you grapple onto platforms where you can swing and pull yourself up, and you can use it as a weapon to attack. And it's a really fun game, and I suggest that if you live in the year 1988, you should play this. <laughs> Go to your local blockbuster and rent this game now. What do we think cost? The cost of the game, I'll say, cart uh, only uh, $8. Well, you know, if you if you want to make some big bucks, I found it sold for twelve fifty. Whoa! Yeah, so that and that's card only. That's hey, really and to box. think I only spent twenty five bucks on this one. So <laughs> hey, um, the, yeah, there you go. Buy on a commando. All right, it brings us to our uh, Netflix, Redbox, Apple TV pick of the week. What do you got, Joe? I haven't watched it yet, but I'm going to say Voltron, Defenders of. Shit. The universe? <laughs> <laughs> Big fan I am. The new Voltron on Netflix is in season, season three. Uh, if you haven't seen that they rebooted Voltron, it, they did, and it's great. It's really done really well. I think it's Japanese animation, but it's with a Western script, and it's done superbly. It has really good writing. I haven't, and again, I haven't seen the third season yet, so no spoilers, guys. I know you guys have already <laughs> binge-watched. Uh, yeah, but I'm going to say, go for it. Voltron, Defenders of the Universe, I think that's what it's called. What about you, Mike? Uh, just to prepare for the upcoming uh, Defender series, I'd say Daredevil Season 2. Watch that. Uh, binge watch it. Uh, although, don't binge watch it. I, I find this thing with binge watching. Uh, you don't take it all in. Like You, you don't remember everything. So right. like, watch a couple episodes at every day instead of uh, taking a whole weekend. But Daredevil Season 2 will give you pretty much everything you need, I think, to lead into the Defender series that's coming out on, on Netflix. So what did it go? When Daredevil, then Darede- Jessica Jones. Daredevil, Jessica Jones. Daredevil, uh, sorry. Dare, yeah, Daredevil. Jessica Jones, uh, Luke Cage, Iron uh, Iron Fist. Oh, I'm sorry, I think we had a, a Daredevil season two prior Bef- before, Iron before, Fist. before Iron Fist. Okay, and then it'll go into the uh, Defender series. Defen- nice, nice. My pick is, and I knew nothing about the movie. Uh, management brought it home from Redbox, Colossal, and it's um, it's Jason Sudeikis and. Anne Hathaway, and it's a black comedy sci-fi, and it's really interesting. It was, you know, it has like over 80% on Rotten Tomatoes, and it's one of those, uh, it's it's interesting. It starts off as kind of a darkish comedy, and then all of a sudden it gets real sci-fi. It goes from dark comedy to Pacific Rim, and then it takes a weird kind of we were watching it with the little guys, and we were like, okay, we're going to watch the rest of this tomorrow, so management and I could watch like the last half hour. And it's like, okay, he can see this, because it did. It got it got really dark. It got really, okay, this went from being a little over his head, but he could watch it, to, you know, sci-fi, you know, like I said, Pacific Rim-ish, you know, robots versus monsters type thing, too. But I, I highly recommend it, especially for, I think it was like... I don't want to brag, you know, because of our our economic status. But we went for the Blu-ray, which is about two dollars. Yeah, it's like two dollars and five cents versus like a dollar seventy if you get the DVD. I'm a millennial. What's a Blu-ray? <laughs> <laughs> so so we we spent the extra thirty cents and got the Blu-ray out of Redbox. I highly recommend it. That that was great. And um, and I'm trying to think, Mike. You got anything to plug? You want you you know you want to why don't you tell people how they can get a hold of your trivia, where you do okay. trivia, all the good stuff. Well, uh, you can find me on Facebook. Just search Stump Trivia Sully. That'll take you to my page. As I say today during my events, you can like the page while you're there and feed my ego. But that's where you can uh, see where I'm going to be uh, doing the trivia events. Currently, I'm just doing it on Monday nights at the Kings Bowl in Linfield. Uh, they have this uh, op- uh, bar area patio uh, that's open during the uh, during the uh, nice weather. And uh, we got some uh, great, I uh, mentioned the uh, trivia nights that we do, our theme nights. We're doing a 90s night coming up. Then we also have a Star Wars night coming, Walking Dead 
We're doing that uh, in October. Now, now, will The Walking Dead just be limited to the TV show or the video games and the comics? Since or? I'm not writing the questions okay. for these things, I'm not talking monkey. They email them to me, and I just re- regurgitate what they have. A very good-looking monkey. <laughs> yes. right. Let's put that um, out there. <laughs> I believe it'll be ta- it could be related. So it could be uh, like a question like, Rick from The Walking Dead starred in what Christmas movie? Uh, which is Love Actually. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> giving away the right. end. Oh, sorry. Remember that for October. <laughs> uh, for October, I believe That's right. Sorry. Sorry, I'll see you at the BC interim. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we have we have some uh, theme nights like that coming up. Uh, you can you can find all that info at Stump Trivia Sully. Just search for it on Facebook. Are, are you uh, other social media? Are you a Twitter, Instagram? How's your how's your my my uh, uh, what my, is it? My my face. My face. face. <laughs> my face. My face. Yeah, 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 my face. Bill says. <laughs> I'm on, I'm on the yeah the Insta face. What's your top uh, eight look like? <laughs> <laughs> I got that one guy Tom. Right. That's it. Um, that's it. They're the only platform I'm on is Facebook. Nice, yeah. nice. Because I'm old. Joe, you got anything to plug? <laughs> Do I? <laughs> When you guys leave. Oh, no, snap. Uh, well, you know, because I always mess it up. Where can people find more from us? Because you know they want more from us. If you want to find more about Carnival Personnel, visit us on our Facebook page, Carnival Personnel on Facebook. And tweet at us, at Carnival Podcast on Twitter. Over. <laughs> <laughs> So I think that wraps it up. Mike is going to stick around. So everybody listening to this now, come back on Thursday where it will be all Mike trivia. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> That's Question not- number one. Why am I doing this? <laughs> right. <laughs> I think he was just apologizing to his future self. Like, oh, sorry, man. Sorry for making you stick around for another damn podcast. Uh, thank you for coming, Mike. And before we let you go, do not forget... Oh.